All right, so tonight um, I'm going to talk about the comforter. And um, you can keep your Bibles open. Uh, I've got a presentation, uh, but it will be going to some scriptures. I'll read them out. Uh, if you want, you can follow along. So, just wait for it to pop up. Oh, there we go. Uh, is that the last slide? It's all right, it looks very similar to the first slide. There we go. <laughs> um, so uh, I got asked uh, about a month ago to um, start preparing for a Saturday a Sunday night talk and I wasn't really too sure what to pray about. I had a couple of different things coming around in my head and uh, so I put it to the Lord and um, as I was praying I just I just these two words came to my head the comforter and then the more I thought about it the more I was just um, uh, kind of amazed by this gift that God's given us so I wanted to have have a look at that uh, tonight so we're going to start out in John 14 um, and in verse 16, I'll, I'll just read this to you here. And I will pray the Father, so this is Jesus here talking to his disciples, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. And the next uh, chapter over in John 15. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceedeth um, from the Father, he shall testify of me. And then we uh, go one more chapter over. And we see Jesus is talking uh, again about it here. Um, and I, I, rather than reading all of uh, from 7 to 33, I'm just going to uh, read some of the key ones here. But I um, encourage you to read it for homework. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. How be it, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall, uh, shall not speak of himself, but whosoever he shall hear, uh, sorry, whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered every man to his own, and shall leave me uh, alone, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So Jesus here was talking about the Comforter and the fact that he would be sending the Comforter to them as a replacement for, him, for himself while he was departing. Uh, so um, I, I want to set the foundation for this talk just to really establish uh, for those here or for those who are watching uh, online, maybe at a later date, if anybody currently here and filled with the Holy Spirit or for anybody who hasn't yet been filled with the Holy Spirit uh, this, this applies to all and um, we'll, just, we'll just set where this starts. So Acts chapter 1 verses uh, 6 to 8 When they therefore were come together they asked of him saying Lord wilt uh, thou Sorry, it's a bit dark here. Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons uh, which, the, oh, thank you, which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto uh, the uttermost parts of the earth. So, this is actually uh, a reflection of what was written in uh, Luke 24 uh, from 46 through to the end. But this part here is specifically verse 49, where Jesus says, he tells them to wait uh, in Jerusalem until they be endured with power from on high. And this here is, is the comforter that Jesus uh, was speaking about in John 14, 15 and 16 that he would send. And so the, what did that actually look like? Uh, in chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 
the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, this was the comforter that, uh, that Jesus spoke about. And this, this was the change from the Old Testament way. We'll read a little bit about that momentarily. Uh, to the New Testament, where the new covenant was laid out and we were now given the ability to have the Holy Spirit put inside of us, uh, which Jesus in John 14, 15 and 16 refers to as the comforter. So uh, going back to Jeremiah 17, 7 to 10, just a couple uh, verses here. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings. The Old Testament... Uh, and, and Jeremiah may have been part of this, but we particularly see this in uh, people like King David, where the Holy Spirit was momentarily given or given for a time and then taken back. Uh, they didn't have the privilege of what we now have, uh, which we just read in, in Acts, which has happened to the majority of us today, where we're filled with the Holy Spirit and, and we can experience all of the benefits that come along with the Holy Spirit. Um, but God's connection in the Old Testament was communal it was group based it was all of his children that he was focused on collectively and he had a couple leaders that would lead the people and then we see a real shift here to the new testament where now it's individualized and we see the need for that here in jeremiah where it says that uh, in, in verse 10 um well in verse 9 that the heart is uh, deceitful above all things and then in verse 10 that the lord searches the heart and tries the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. So we see a real difference in, in what was and now what is. And uh, this, is, this is going to set us up for the direction we're heading. So when we think about comfort, when we're comfortable, when we're at comfort, some of the things that might come to mind or the way we might be feeling is things like peace, joy and love. <coughs> These are, these, are generally, these are generally the feelings associated with comfort or being comforted. If we think about achieving comfort and achieving, and I don't mean uh, like just, you know, sitting down on the couch, that type of comfort, but achieving actual true peace, joy, love and comfort in our life, comfort from tribulation that we might be having, comfort from, you know, loss, comfort from you know a healing or whatever's going on in our life comfort from all sorts of things that this world can throw at us these things here are the actions that we can do trusting having trust or faith in god or in situations because obviously that's going to slow anxiety if we have trust doing good or being good having all things in moderation and um not to excess being submissive in terms of not trying to dominate everything not trying to have the have the reins all the time and you know be be turning the turning the steering wheel uh being patient and being kind these these are kind of the actions which lead to comfort what these actually all are though are the fruits of the spirit from galatians 5 22 that we can read uh trusting is, is faith and goodness is goodness good is goodness moderation temperance uh, submissiveness is meekness patience is um, uh, long suffering and uh, kindness these are the fruits of the spirit which actually tie really strongly into what it is to have the comforter inside of us and in fact we read in uh, Jeremiah there before that uh, in, in verse 10 that uh, the Lord searches the heart and according and and uh, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. And these are the fruits of our doing and and how we can achieve comfort through the Holy Spirit in our life if if we're kind of actioning these things through faith and goodness and temperance and meekness. God laid them out in the fruits of the Spirit. I want to just uh, flash through a couple, uh, couple different testimonies here. To, to give an example 
And I've got, for those uh, online, I've got a little QR code up the top on each page because all of these, um, these testimonies are found online and they're linked to amazing stories, usually one page kind of PDFs, uh, one or two pages of uh, some incredible, incredible stories of what God has done and how God has given these people comfort through all sorts of situations. So maybe you require comfort from, it, from one of these. Here, fear of death. Um, we see that uh, there, was, there was a real fear of death in, in these two guys here, um, Stuart and... Uh, I've had a mental blank now. Um, <laughs> check the QR code. Um, that's why it's there. Uh, and in terms of loss, uh, so, so we've got Ray and Raylene and um, Lynn Batty, who lost their husband, Sean, who lost his father, Judy, who lost her son. And uh, the, the, we, we actually saw at the, the very last slide, for those who were here at the very start, that started it, in uh, Philippians 4, verse 7, it talks about the peace that passes all understanding. And... Um, you know, to experience, I haven't experienced loss at such a personal level as, as a close family member like this, but, uh, but after having two kids, I tell you, it makes you a bit more emotional about stuff like uh, there's, there's, you know, movies that if something bad's happening to a kid, it gets you, you feel it, and you just, you think, imagine if that happened to my son. And, um, and I, I can't imagine that I could recover from that type of loss emotionally. Uh, or physically, but um, there's some great stories here of how God has been able to comfort them through um, through the use of the Holy Spirit. Now, Carol gave her testimony earlier today, and Carol could actually fit pretty much all of these categories. Um, but I had her here on peace from uh, the story that was particularly uh, online for, for Carol was uh, for uh, healing her from phobia. And, um, and we, we can also see uh, Jill and Lily here as well. Tutra Laura and Lily, who uh, have some amazing testimonies of receiving peace and comfort uh, through some really difficult circumstances. From a last resort perspective, we've got Evelyn up the top there, who had a less than 1% chance of survival, and um, God pulled her through and gave her huge peace and comfort. Katie there, who had anxiety and depression and was completely healed. Um, Dan's boy there was one week old and he had a stroke. And uh, you can only imagine how we heard a testimony today of another young child who was in need and um, the, that boy was completely raised up and healed. And the peace and comfort for the family was obviously quite amazing through, through that situation. And Charlie, there, he, um, he had a stroke and uh, it was instantly, instantly healed. Um, and then uh, the last one here, um, Chad, now Pastor Chad, was, and same for McKay down there, who's up in Darwin, uh, had really like drug, alcohol, and party lifestyles. That's just how they lived, it's how they rolled. And, um, but what they found was that the world had, had nothing to offer. And this is the difference, particularly in these here, where um, this, this is the difference between what the world calls comfort and what God calls comfort. And whilst they, they sought the world's comfort heavily, uh, what they found was that it was empty. There was, there was no true comfort to be found. It always e ended in darkness. It ended in, it ended in a bad night. It ended in a whole bunch of different circumstances. And um, um, that's Trez there as well, who had an, a, uh, a healing from an addiction uh, as well from alcoholism and uh, depression. Um, actually, I think drugs as well, so they all fit pretty into similar baskets. Um, even Pastor Chris, who was up here today, had uh, he, he used to be into the party scene and the drugs, or more the hippie scene and the drugs. Um, and praise the Lord, he uh, he's a different man now. Um, but the peace and comfort that's come into these people's lives through through the Holy Spirit that God's given them is is quite incredible. And so I want to focus today on how we can achieve that and how we can how we can utilize the holy spirit inside of us to get to that to that point to that level so um obviously a lot of or some of those things happened at the point of conversion for instance those with um uh, the addictions etc but others were whilst they were walking along with god they were you know fellowshipping doing doing whatever and uh following god and and tribulation hits us 
And it happens to us all just because we're filled with the Holy Spirit doesn't mean that uh, nothing bad will ever happen to us. That'd be nice. Uh, But it probably would also uh, make us not have to trust or put as much faith in God. So one of the questions I had when I was reading this was, why, why did Jesus choose the comforter as the thing that he said he was going to give them? There was, there was other choices. Uh, if we think about the Holy Spirit, it could have been any number of these things. Um, he, could have, he could have said, I'm going to send the healer to you. Anytime you need a healing, you can just pray and you've got you know, the healing, healer inside of you. Or, you know... Uh, I'll send the grace or I'll send the redemption or, or knowledge, you know, I'll just, I'll send to you something so that you've got knowledge. But he chose the word comforter. And it kind of, I, I, I was thinking about this for a little while and I was like, why, why could it be the comforter? And I don't know if I have exactly the right answer because, well, I'm not God. But uh, in my opinion, it's, it's the thing that the world just couldn't offer. And it was the thing that, that they needed. So if, uh, remembering back to John fourteen sixteen, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So he uses the word another comforter. And, and the reason he uses the word another is because uh, he's actually speaking about replacing himself. Um, and he tells them tribulation is going to come, and you're going to need this comforter. And so there was actually... After looking at, looking at it and looking at all these verses uh, throughout the three different chapters in John, which speak about his departure and, and, and the fact he's going to send this, and then in Luke, uh, when he comes back to them in, in, in chapter 24, it really seems like he's impressing upon them the fact that it's going to be important that they have the comforter inside of them. So this wasn't just an empty gift that we could use if we needed to use it. This was a gift that we would use or we would need to use to be able to survive being who we are, being Christians, being Christ-like, following Jesus. Which means that if we are not discomfortable, if we're not discomfortable, <laughs> if we're not uncomfortable, that's a better use of English, then potentially uh, if, if we're not uncomfortable because, I don't know, maybe are we doing God's work? <laughs> so that's something maybe we have to consider. But Jesus tells them here that they will be discomforted by doing his work. And therefore, that's the use of the comforter. The comforter is there because we're going to need it by, by rote of the fact that we are following Christ and truly following Christ. And so if we're not embedded in this world's comfort and, and look, don't get me wrong, I, I, I watch you know, uh, Netflix and um, I listen to Amazon Music and, or whatever. Um, I've got a Facebook account. So I'm not, talking about, uh, I'm not talking about a complete disuse of those things, but it's about the priority it takes in our life and, and if, it's taking, if it's taking over the things that are of God. Um, is, it, is it the thing that we're finding comfort in? When God has given us the thing to find comfort in inside of us. And we might find it hard to actually, to actually take comfort from that Holy Spirit that's inside of us from time to time and I think that that's probably due to Romans 8 if, uh, where, we, where you can read, re- read Romans 8 and read the whole book of James is, is quite amazing but they speak about the, the warring of the flesh and the spirit and, and so if one is up the other one is down and if one is down the other one's up it works in reverse and so if we're finding that we're needing comfort and where we start to look to the world for, for, for comfort or the, the comfortable things around us, rather than the Holy Spirit, it, what we might find is that it just actually starts to exasperate the issue. Whereas if we build, build ourselves up in the Spirit, then the comforter is there, and it's always there for us to lean on and, and actually do its job, to actually comfort us. And so this, is, this was the gift that God left us with, Jesus left us with, which... Yeah, is so different than anything the world can offer. It's uh, you can't get addicted <laughs> to the Holy Spirit comforter, um, at which you can with all of the worldly, the worldly comforters. Um, if you try, think I was trying to think. Okay, what's a positive thing in the world that you know does go? I could go on a holiday. That's pretty good. Uh, that would comfort me. Um, but then you know, money runs out, and you've got to go back to work, <laughs> um, or you've got kids, so you can't relax anyway. Um, no, like the only comforter you can really get, which is just for you, 
sits inside of you and it's the Holy Spirit. And that's, that's how God set it up. In John 16, um, verse 12, and, and I have yet many things to say unto you. I read this before. But ye cannot bear them now. Um, so this here is, is talking about how they had come... Um, he had, he had things to say to them, but they, they couldn't take it on board now because they didn't have the Holy Spirit at this time. In verse 13, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The scripture is really interesting because Jesus has said, I'm going to send you the Comforter. And then he said... But uh, just so you're aware, there's actually things I can't tell you now. What that means to us is there are things that Jesus couldn't say and therefore they are not recorded in the Bible. So the only way to understand God's message, Jesus said, is to get the comforter. So you need to have the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that's going to add on the last little bit that Jesus couldn't say in words. It couldn't be expressed in words because the comforter... The Holy Spirit is to be experienced. And, as he said here, that the Spirit of, tr- of truth, this is the next uh, name that he calls this, he will guide you into all truth. A lot of churches today don't believe that you need the Holy Spirit. They don't believe that you need to speak in tongues. That flies completely in the face of this scripture where Jesus said, I can't tell you everything. Get the Holy Spirit. It'll tell you the rest. Pretty straightforward. It's not much, not much else to, to battle on that note because it, it can't, everything can't have been recorded in the Bible. Jesus said it. The spirit, the comforter, the spirit of truth, that's going to take us the rest of the way. So there are two separate kind of messages to take out of this. One is uh, for those of us who are filled with the Holy Spirit and the other is for those who are not. Now, I don't think the Holy Spirit necessarily lives in the heart, um, but uh, though uh, there is scripture that talks about um, uh, that are the fleshy tables of our hearts being written on and, and the commandments, so, um, but that's for another more in-depth talk. So for those filled with the Spirit, what we see here is Jesus is setting an example of, of what we should do and how, how we should best connect with him. Um, he's giving us the method... And he's telling us that life isn't going to be easy and that it probably shouldn't be easy for us. Something to think about. If, if life is a bit too cruisy, um, if we're just coming here on Sundays and as we've heard, you know, keeping the seat warm, seats don't need to be warm, they're plastic, they'll be here for thousands of years, ask the greenies. <laughs> um, so are we just keeping a seat warm? Is it pretty cruisy? It's just easy to come here? Who have we spoken to during the week and told about God? It doesn't have to be an outreach. It could just be, it could just be uh, you know, a random conversation that you've had with somebody or whatever. There's so many ins. There's always a way just to drop God into a conversation if, he, if he's on the forefront of your mind and, and if you're praying about. So the encouragement for the saints here who have the Holy Spirit, who have the comforter inside of them, is to use the comforter through creating creating. I don't want to say creating tribulation, but uh, creating the need for it in your life. You know, like uh, I think times are probably a little bit different maybe than back then, you know, like uh, we don't get stones thrown at us for what we believe in uh, in our country. Praise the Lord, we're lucky enough. But, um, but there's still people rebuke you for that, uh, for, for your beliefs, whatever it is. And it, we might find that it's uncomfortable, but it's actually, if we make it just a part of our life, just talking about God, it'll become easier and easier and the comforter will take over and it will take care of the situation. And the fruits of the Spirit are your guide for how to activate the comforter within you. So you can reflect on those. I, um, I had a great witness the, uh, the, the other day and it, uh, it was just my Uber driver um, on the way to the airport. And um, yeah, I'm always just surprised how easily it comes around to God. And it could be, you know, it's, it could be because, you know, they'll, they'll ask me something like, oh, are you, you know, going to go out for drinks, whatever? Oh, I don't drink alcohol. And then, oh, why? And then you're into it or um, lots of different reasons. She, she was from another country and, um, 
yeah, we just got speaking about Pentecost. Like I asked her what her belief in God was and, and it just went from there and she wanted to come and check it out, the Vogue. It was really, really quite easy and basic. And I, I said this actually down at Youngie's camp, the fact that um, it's actually, you can be sitting there and you can be nervous and you can be thinking, um, should I speak? But actually we should be thinking, uh, should I not speak? Like, you know, like it should, be the, it should be the opposite way around. Like, why shouldn't I be speaking now? So we have to really flip that. The, the other side, the other, the other character up here, um, still with a heart, just not with the Holy Spirit in it yet, um, is for those who don't have the Holy Spirit in their life and for those who are looking for a comforter in their life. There's, uh, there's, a, there's a fair bit going on in the world at the moment, if you've noticed. Um, there's a little bit going on in Australia in terms of flooding and uh, uh, you know, coronavirus is still doing its thing and, and all of the other, the other local stuff. There's obviously some bigger stuff going on over in Ukraine and um, with the Russians, etc. There's a lot in this world to be pretty discomforted about, to be pretty uncomfortable about. And uh, you might be trying to figure out you know, the best way forward. The great thing about all of this is that we're not saying that we have the answer. We're saying that God has the answer. And we're not saying that we are going to have to give you anything. We're saying you can check it out for yourself. You can come here. We can explain how it all works. It's pretty straightforward. It's actually just all in the scriptures I've already read. They had prayer, they asked God if it was true and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they were filled with the Comforter. And from that moment on, once you're filled with the Comforter, once you're filled with the Holy Spirit, that peace, that joy, that love will come inside of you and the fears of this world, um, those, those two people at the start, those two brothers at the start, both had a fear of dying and, and death and the end. Actually, I think Carol mentioned that in her testimony as well, uh, a fear of the last days. I think my mum, you had, had a fear of the last days as well. And uh, once the Holy Spirit came in, the fear went out. And so um, come, know, know the Holy Spirit and, uh, and have that fear removed. Be comforted by a comforter that doesn't, doesn't leave. This uh, last verse here, just to finish, in uh, Philippians 4, verse 7, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ. Often we can kind of, in our own terms, go, I can't be comforted from this situation. It could be guilt from stuff that you've done. I can guarantee nothing you, you did was worse than what King David did or um, what Paul did. I'm pretty confident. Uh, well, I can't say, but you hopefully haven't killed anyone. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, or committed adultery and, and killed their husband. Like there's some really big examples of bad things that happened in the Bible. And yet God's grace was enough. We can't understand how comfort works. We can't understand how God can change our hearts. But we don't have to. God's laid it all out there. So we just ask that you come and check it out and receive that comforter for yourself. All the people said, praise the Lord. So, uh,